Hello, nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom Movies edition for the week of June 11th, 2018. This week in movies, we've got updates on Willy Wonka. We've got so much stuff. Really, this is our biggest episode most weeks, and this week is no exception. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we have to get into this week's sponsor. We got a new sponsor this week, not one that's really paying me yet, but it will. This one will. This one actually will, besides the t-shirts. Those pay me when you guys buy them. This week's sponsor has been brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark. This is a very strange sponsor, you say. It's true, but uh, my girlfriend and I are selling a bunch of stuff trying to clear out our house because uh, she has collected clothes since she was probably 15 years old. So she has a lot of vintage stuff, putting pictures up here, they're cycling through. Check them out. I'll leave a link to her Mercari and her Poshmark down in the description so you can go buy some of this vintage stuff. Any of you ladies out there, uh, we will be selling a couple of my things as well. So there will be guy stuff kind of nerdy stuff as you might imagine but again this episode is brought to you by both Mercari and Poshmark links in the description let's hit the news oh whoa, 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 whoa. before we get into the news also guys we have to do one more thing next week is Denver com or this weekend rather is Denver Comic Con so next week we will not be doing the week in nerddom we will have how-to con videos we will have adventures in photography we will have some cosplay stuff I'm going to try and finish getting all of my interviews edited and posted from the last conventions that we were at. Uh, the Mushroom Head episode should be going up. All kinds of stuff will still be happening. Just no week in nerddom. Okay, now let's get into the news. Big guns, right off the bat, we've got Noah Holly finished the Doctor Doom script, but can't do anything with it because he's in production on Pale Blue Dot at this point. So... Once Pale Blue Dot is done, then we will hopefully start getting updates on production for Doctor Doom. And if Legion is any sort of indication of how he's going to handle Doctor Doom, I, I am definitely chomping at the bit for this. Apparently the script that he has written, the studio is super excited about. Um, they, they, what, how did he put it? They, they're super, they're really happy. That's what it was. They're really happy with his script. And he is also really happy. So, I, darn freaking obligations with contracts and things. I, I, I did why, yeah, Dr. Doom needs to happen. And Noah Hawley needs to be the guy to take care of it. But that's all we got. So we got to kick on next to Willy Wonka. Apparently, they're not rebooting, they're doing a prequel to the story. And as it stands, according to Collider, uh, Donald Glover, Ezra Miller, and Ryan Gosling are the front runners to play Willy Wonka. I honestly feel like any of them could do it. It would be a little weird having this be a prequel and having Donald Glover be Willy Wonka, being as both the guys that have played him in the current timeline of Willy Wonka are white. That's not to say that it he wouldn't that Donald Glover wouldn't be able to be Willy Wonka because I'm he's a great actor and is really really funny. So like it would it would totally work. It's just weird again like w Willy Wonka being a crazy guy that he is, maybe he got some skin pigment alterations, whatever. I, uh, there's no real hard news here. I just wanted to talk about rumors for a second. So we're going to kick next over to God of War. Yes, there is talk with Steven DeKnight, the guy who brought us Pacific Rim Uprising, uh, that he, he, he's in serious talks, some serious talks, uh, to 
do a God of War movie. And he's also talked about wanting to do a Moon Knight movie. So video games and a Marvel adaptation. Uh, I... <laughs> I don't know, based on the little bit of, but the small body of work he has so far, I think he did Iron Fist as well. Correct me if I'm wrong, I could very well be wrong about that, but uh, going off of Pacific Rim Uprising, maybe? I mean, it wasn't horrible, but it also wasn't very good either, so. I, I, I. He doesn't, he didn't let, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He didn't have uh, a source material for Pacific Rim, aside from the one movie and who can do as good as Guillermo del Toro, very, very few in this world. So maybe he's got something, I, 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 but either way, I feel like he was in talks with a studio, which means there's already a studio looking to make this movie, the, the God of War movie. The Moon Moon Knight movie is, I think, was his idea, and he's just saying, hey, wouldn't this be cool? But the God of War thing is in talks with the studio. So the studio is saying, we have this IP, we want to make it into a movie, maybe you're the guy, sell us on you. So I, I'm i down for a God of War movie, and, and I feel like there was... Uh, I, I didn't write it in the notes, but there was a, a pretty eloquent quote from him if i'm remembering properly saying about adaptations and how you have to take the essence of the story you have to do some liberties in order to make it fit in the movie format but you still need to pay homage to your source material so if if i'm remembering that right then he's got the right idea it's just we'll see how the execution goes Next on the docket, we've got some Star Wars talk to get out of the way. Yes, that's right, we're talking freaking Star Wars. I don't care about all you fanboys. You can watch if you want, because I know you actually care. I know, because Star Wars really isn't doing as horrible as everyone wants to think it is. Anyway, um, so Ron Howard was talking with Empire uh, Magazine recently, and he, they were talking to him about future solo movies because we know Alden whatever is signed on for a three movie deal we don't know if that's because they plan on making a Lando movie and they need a solo in the Lando movie or what the situation is but we know he's on for at least three movies <clears throat> uh, so they were asking him about a sequel to to solo and Howard said well we're still asking questions we're still figuring out where it would fit uh, and I'm definitely paraphrasing this, so don't, I'm not quoting him, don't get that confused. But he said uh, they're, they're looking at events in the Star Wars universe and asking, all right, what are the overall effects to the universe, to what we know of Star Wars? And then more specifically, how will that affect Han? And is that something we want to make into a movie? So, I mean, they set up him joining Jabba's gang, however briefly that might be. They set up a couple of things that could potentially push that story for forward, but we don't know. It's still early, 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 early in the planning phase, if you could even call it that at this point. So we can't get our hopes up too far. But they were also talking to him about other things to do with his involvement with Star Wars, and he voiced how it would be interesting to get into the crime syndicates and, and, and delve deeper into the dark side of the universe that doesn't have anything to do with the force that is just the star wars universe you have it's basically this space opera kind of thing but you have these giant crime syndicates there are four major crime syndicates in the universe previous to disney buying it they can still rewrite that however they want but effectively until they say otherwise we are anticipating at least four major crime syndicates and howard said well, it, it, it would be very interesting to explore that, to see how those crime syndicates uh, fight and, 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 and co converse and do the different things. So that, I feel like, is the movie that would be very, very interesting to do. And while we're on the topic, this has nothing to do with uh, Ron, Ron Howard necessarily, but it does have to do with Solo. While we're on the topic, this, I feel like, needs to be addressed because... People seem to have misunderstood what happened in Solo at the end with Enfys Nest. 
when he, when Han gave her all of the money, the millions and millions of credits, effectively, and now people are saying, well, did Han start the rebellion? Is he the meta re rebel? Is he the grandfather of the rebellion in a way? No, <laughs> I. The obvious answer. And maybe it's just obvious to me because I, I don't read things as well as I probably should. But, uh, Emphis Nest was not necessarily rebelling against the Empire. She was rebelling against the Crimson Dawn. She was rebelling against a crime syndicate that had control over that section of the galaxy. She was not, again, not necessarily rebelling. So he gave her money to fight Crimson Dawn, not to fight the Empire. So, like, it's, it's, I know, I realize it's kind of a fine line, but it's still a distinction that we need to recognize. Did that eventually become the rebellion against the Empire? Sure, if, if they want to kind of steer it that way, but that's not han wasn't wasn't funding the rebellion against the empire he was giving uh, uh, uh the little guy a leg up is what he was doing that's all he was doing he didn't see it as going against the empire he saw it as going against a crime lord that's it no questions uh anyway i mean i i, I could be misinterpreting this i could be misremembering the information uh, I did only see the movie twice, so again, maybe I misunderstood something that happened in the movie, but as it stands, that's how I read what happened, because Emphis Ness, again, was not necessarily rebelling against the Empire, because the Empire was not out there. The Empire did not have their the, the Iron Fist over that region of the galaxy. They had their Iron Fist elsewhere, and Crimson Dawn was taking care of that, so... That unless maybe Crimson Dawn and the Empire have some sort of link, maybe. But as far as from again, from my understanding of things, the Empire assumes Maul is dead, so he no longer has a Darth uh, 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 honorific attached to the front of his name. He is just Maul, or whatever his actual name is. Though I'm sure in the uh, cartoon they still called him Darth Maul, and in the comics they still call him Darth Maul. But that just it just doesn't seem to jibe with me. That's all I'm saying. But we're moving on. Our last two bits have to do with the DC Extended Universe. And the first is Reddit leak rumors. Reddit rumor leak things. Um, it, so, it seems that there is some chatter around the studios about Suicide Squad 2 and actually upcoming DC movies in general. Uh, the One of the biggest rumors, and one of the one that's probably accurate, probably the most accurate, is that they're going to be redesigning the look of basically the entire cast of Suicide Squad. Uh, very notably, the Joker. They're making him look a lot more like the comic... And this, again, totally rumor. This is not substantiated at all. Making him look a lot more like the comic books in that they're going to be taking away the tattoos and they're going to put him in something, uh, an outfit that you would see him in in the comics. He is, however, going to be keeping the metal grill for, for apparently plot purposes. There's going to be something to do with Batman trying to steal the, the grin of the Joker or something along those lines. Uh, so that's going to stay at least for one more movie, but that it, it is going away eventually from the sounds of it. So believe what you will about the rumors. Also in the rumor category, Matt Reeves is apparently looking to cast a younger Batman than Ben Affleck. So maybe Ben Affleck shuffling his feet for so long kind of bit him in the ass because he's no longer got the option to play Batman. Matt Reeves is casting elsewhere. Um, so he looked, he's wanting a younger, more agile, I believe was the word, uh, Batman. It, again, totally rumor. Don't know if this is true. I honestly wouldn't think that that would be the case, but who knows? And then another rumor is that there is artwork floating around for a female Robin, implying that they're going to be borrowing even more heavily from the Dark Knight Returns, um... Then, but that doesn't jive with them wanting a younger Batman, so one of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. Uh, I don't know. 
bait and switch, turtle shell game. Which one of these things is true? I don't know, but let's talk about it in the comments. Uh, I honestly, I feel like the female Robin thing is a little bit more plausible than Ben Affleck being recast, but who knows? Let's have that conversation. And then the last bit of news has to do with the Joker. Even more to do with the Joker. Uh, there are going to be two, yes, that's right, two solo Joker movies. Uh, the one, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker is still getting made. There's, st it's still going to be an Elseworlds story. It's still go supposedly going to launch a new movie imprint inside of Warner Brothers, specifically for these Elseworlds stories. Um, also, uh, the, another rumor about Batman is the Batman movie is going to be a standalone so that it doesn't play into, so feasibly could be an Elseworld story, which might maybe make the recasting thing more plausible. I don't know. Again, bird walking. Let's get back to the Joker. So Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves, Joaquin Phoenix is still going to be the Joker in the Elseworlds movie, but it just got announced that Jared Leto is going to be starring and executive producing his own Joker movie, which will be a prequel to the Suicide Squad movie, if I'm remembering correctly. So, as a fan, as somebody who feels like you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't set in stone the Joker's origin ever, because then you, you take the knees out of the character, uh, it, it, it's actually a really great idea to me to be, to have these two diff vastly different jokers, but from a money-making standpoint, I feel like this is a bad idea because you're just going to confuse your audience, uh, who doesn't, who isn't familiar with the mythology of the comic books. But that's just me. Maybe I'm wrong. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And that is the end of this week's movies edition, guys. Thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss this week in movies? What should we talk about next week in movies? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper in the conversation, jump over to the website. Generallynerdy.net is the place that you can do that. It's also the place you can find the social media links, get all the freebies, all the nerdy swag links. All of that stuff is up on generallynerdy.net. Or there's a Patreon, patreon.com slash generallynerdy. You can support me a little more directly. You get a lot more content instead of physical stuff. You get lots more content that might do you better in the long run. Who knows? Check it out, though, over on patreon.com slash generallynerdy. If you're new to the channel, click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you're falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. Box above it will take you somewhere else to the through the channel. But before you click the boxes and go to the places, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here. <laughs>